I always loved a good sci-fi and what better way to play one than reach for one of 90s games. Beneath a Steel Sky is a classic point-and-click adventure game. It was released in 1994 by Revolution Software. I'm sure many of you know they also created Broken Sword, which is kind of synonym for adventure game. This was their second attempt to create an adventure game right after Lou of the Temptress. So, is Beneath a Steel Sky any good you ask? Well, let's find out. Ever since it came out I wanted to play the bloody game. Apparently it took ages to get to it, and I'm kinda glad it took so long for a couple of reasons. First, the lack of good adventure games in recent years, on second is music, which I'll get to in a moment. It's been released for DOS, Amiga and remastered a couple of years ago for iOS. I haven't played remastered or Amiga version, so I'll stick with DOS for this review. Since I've got DOS version, let's start with the installation. Installation is pretty straightforward. Insert CD, run install, choose the path you want the game to be installed in and select sound card. So far so good. However, there are a couple of problems. One problem is the lack of any kind of setup program, so if you need to change the sound card for any reason, you need to reinstall the game. Another thing they failed to do or just couldn't be bothered to do is why the selection of sound card. Not only that, the only wavetable sound card it supports is Roland MT32. No general MIDI, MPU 401, Gravis Ultrasound, nothing. But I'm not finished yet. If you own MT32 you get noise wavetable synth, but you don't get PCM sound and voiceover. Sounds are generated by MT32's instruments, which sounds horrible. If you want sounds on voiceover, you need to select Sound Blaster, but you won't get wavetable music. Really smart revolution. There is sort of workaround to get both sound and wavetable music though. In DOS, you are the flock. The only way is to run the game in ScumVM program where you don't even need MT32 device itself. ScumVM allows you to run some old point and click adventure games on new hardware and operating systems. Beneath a Steel Sky is set in a future. Earth has been severely damaged by pollution which threatens the existence of mankind. Ah sorry, I forgot it's the future, I meant people kind. Most of the setup is explained in the hand-drawn comic book intro, which in my opinion always looks better than today's renders. Intro does also a cracking job of setting up the main character, Robert Foster. He's a sole survivor of a helicopter crash somewhere in the wilderness when he was a little boy, and the people who found him sort of adopted him as a son, hence the name Foster, as he's been fostered. They taught him how to survive in the wilderness, and he developed some other skills too. After many years, some soldiers from a nearby city called Union City came searching for him. They introduced themselves by opening fire on the village. Robert hid himself, but after soldiers threatened everybody to wipe out the village, he gave up and let them take him in exchange for safety of his tribe. But, as he usually is, they had to die anyway, obviously. The chopper transporting Rob then crashes into the city and they escapes. Sir, the guidance system, it's gone crazy! We're going to hit! Maybe I'd get some answers now. If I survived another copter crash. After he escapes this factory with security looking for him, that's where you take control. You need to distract the guard and find your way out. After that, you can start searching for answers, who you are, why they brought you back and how to get the hell out of the city. Not exactly most original idea. But if you've got to this point and expecting cliched rubbish which you've seen a million times before, don't worry. You'll be in for a treat. It's very well written, interesting, funny, a bit unsettling and dark sci-fi story about searching for your identity that sucks you in and won't let you go until you finish the game. To help you find it, you've got Joey. Robot AI Rob have built back in his village which can be installed in various shelves. Joey will help you solve some puzzles and get through a couple of situations that need 
let's say, special robotic approach. Also, his witty remarks and smart ass attitude perfectly fit to the commie dystopian setting of the city. You can find a couple of hiccups and nonsense in dialogues. Sometimes, the game doesn't give a relationship enough time to evolve naturally. It just forces the plot to happen. Like when you literally just met this girl and she gives you valuable information which could be very dangerous in the city if you weren't who you say you were. Another mildly annoying thing sometimes happens when you start a conversation with someone and they start running about all over the bloody screen to a point where they can speak. Speaking about conversation, voice acting is brilliant. It's like listening to a real conversation. Since the entire game is practically based on dialogues, it would be a shame to cook it up with bad voice acting. I must say, I don't find a single character with bad or even mediocre voice acting. Most of the dialogues are funny, even though lots of them are there just to be amusing, which is working brilliantly. Joey's comments, crazy doctor, or his patient on his table with open stomach who has no problem having a dialogue with you. Have you brought me any grapes? I didn't come here to visit you. What are you here for? To see the doctor. You'll regret it. He's completely mad, you know. He's not even qualified. Why are you here then? I needed the money. Sometimes, subtitles don't match with what's being said. Apparently, voice actors didn't fancy what developers gave them to work with, and in the end, they didn't fix these little differences. Let's crack on with the story. After you got the factory, you'll find out the entire city is controlled by a computer AI called Link. This may be the source where the Chinese got its idea for the credit system they use today. It works almost the same. Link is everywhere, and everything and everyone depends on it. But, as it turns out, Link is not what it seems at first. Aren't you begin to realize something is very wrong with the city and you need to find out what? Since the Link is a computer AI, you'll make use of your hacking skills in Link Space. And since the game is from 90s, hacking has to be done in 3D of course. What is quite interesting in a game of its time, that you can die quite often, and you certainly will. There are some places where you can die during the game, and at least one of them will get you. Like in most of the adventure games, puzzle solving is one of the key elements here. Puzzles in the game are always logical. Sometimes you'll get a hint during conversation, so if you pay attention and listen to everything people have to say, you'll never get stuck. And if you do, there are no hints in the game. As it became standard in today's games, to make it easier, and let's face it, less fun. Considering the game is pretty old and the graphics is in low resolution, it looks sick. The game itself is not too long, about 4 hours of gameplay, so there are not too many backgrounds, but they are beautifully hand-drawn, some even animated, and perfectly drawn characters, all of them animated. You'd be surprised how much detail they squeezed out of such a low resolution. Every screen is an artwork. Every part of the canvas has been painted to show you how the world may look like in the future, and unfortunately, they've been right about some things. We are not there yet, but it's certainly getting there. Music is average. Some parts are better, some parts are worse. Music fits to the environment, but don't expect anything stellar. Almost every location has its own track, and if you want to listen to the soundtrack, link is in the description. We are way up in the clouds, Joey! We need to find a way to the ground. The subway. It's like a warren built by giant rabbits. As I said before, to get a good music out of the game, you either need Roland MT32 or an emulator. ScamVM can emulate MT32 using current sound card or sound module, and sounds are working as well. It's much better than listening to FM synthesis, which is bloody horrible. Sequel was supposed to come out last year, but it hasn't been released, or no release date has been announced yet. There are some trailers and gameplay videos out there, and it looks awesome. But the graphics isn't everything.
What's the verdict then? Beneath a Steel Sky has got a brilliant story, almost perfect voice acting and dialogues, gorgeous graphics for its time, and unfortunately not too memorable music. Does it have some flaws? Sure, what game doesn't? Should you care? Absolutely not. If you love adventure games, I recommend you give Beneath a Steel Sky a go. You'll have tons of fun playing the game. It's one of the best ever made. That's it for the vid. Catch you next time.